So uh, right now I'm going to teach you how to make the short connectors. Uh, the, uh, the short connectors are used to connect short connector, it looks like this, and you use it to connect uh, the, the screw or the, the electrode. Here, right here, this sure. And then it connects to see the cable. See. It connects the cable, 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 the cable. So then, uh, every electrode needs to be connected to this wire. Uh, this wire, it has, it's a multi-core wire. How many cores? Thirty-six. So it has thirty-six, you know, cores, like like thirty-six small wires in each. In the big wire. Yeah. So you connect here, and then uh, you would connect to the electrode, and then the next one over here, and then you connect to the electrode, and you just keep going. Um, Explain about the known boxes to me. Yep, I was going to pass that known boxes. Okay. Um, so we about to show them click. how to make one for now? What's that? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Make one. Yeah. So, I don't know if everyone can, can see, but so here's the finished one. <coughs> so, they don't have to be too long. So, yeah, she's we'll try uh, 30 yeah. centimeters. So, here's a, here's a wire. The wire is. Uh, about 16 Dodge or 16 AWG? 16 AWG, she Okay. So we measure 30 centimeters. It's about. This is centimeters, right? Okay. So 30 centimeters, and then we cut the wire. 37 meters. Yeah, it should be a little bit longer than 30. So if you can go for it, go for it, because you have to strip the ends up. Okay. So we'll, we'll do 40, 40 centimeters. Okay. So there's a little screw on this connector. Hey, connector, magado, what will And uh, so we need to we need to connect the, the copper I got, the wire. I got the wire net the connector So uh, we'll do some wire stripping. You know, so I don't know. Maybe about this much. And if you haven't stripped before, it helps if you move it back and forth to loosen it up. I mean, and, then, and then you pull. You pull, pull this one is quite tough. Okay. See? So yeah, well, I don't do you have so now, now we try to wrap it or coil it uh, around the screw. Okay. So to do this, it's very small, so it helps if we have uh, some pliers. Okay. So everybody will get to do a couple of these, make uh, up a couple. Yeah. And sometimes when you go through the, if you're in uh, the forest or the jungle or whatever it is, uh, you need longer than 30 centimeters, so you'll put two together. You can just connect two together like this to make them longer. <coughs> and you always need to have some extras. Yeah. 
Okay. And then you take a screwdriver. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then uh, screwdriver. Flat uh, head screwdriver. A, a flat screwdriver. Uh, yeah. Well, well okay, yes, yeah. And screw it in tightly. <coughs> Now there should be a uh, good connection. That's the connection yeah. Yeah. And then, then you have to take a pair of pliers yeah. and bend these over. Oh, that. that's right. Sorry. Uh, so the little tabs stick up. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you do the other side, of course, and then you have a connector. So that the is not connected to Yeah. Uh, ideally, you know, maybe you should do a, a resistance test on the, multi the multimeter. Just check that it's a good connection. So connection comes with resistance. resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Max, you think that's good? Is that, is that good for now? Or, um, so I guess we, we only have about two sets of tools, so I don't know. Yeah. So we'll pass the tools around in some wire, and, and, and people can make up a couple. You can do it during the break, or you can do it while we're talking, or. Um, let's see. Wait, you're not taking credit for one of Kevin's, are you? These are the slides, these are the slides that are in the presentation that I'm going to give now. So you can mark them up 
Um, any notes you want to take? No, the by lady don't we have a lady that presentation is slightly right. And we will also have the electronic copy on the Google Drive so you could download it later. So the thing to us about them, maybe so what is the next and then download them? Soft copy, I tell you. So we'll look at this, uh, wherever it's gone, oh, there. <laughs> we'll look at the SISCAL this afternoon as part of the uh, electrical resistivity imaging 2D that this instrument has the capability of doing. The SISCAL bonus is SISCAL with the thermal melody. I mentioned to you yesterday some of the uh, properties of this. We have uh, four cables that get connected in. So you can't maybe see it, but this is 1 to 36. So that's electrodes 1 to 36, and then 37 to 72. That is 7 to 72. Yeah. You don't have to have all the cables hooked up. You could just do 36. You could do 54. You could go all the takes the other move. I'll look to them my not. I know So for example, tomorrow we'll go to the park in the morning and hook up 72, hopefully at four meter spacing. That will give us uh, 284 meters long. 284. So your your first one is at zero, and your 72nd one is at 284 meters. So zero one, eh? So it's not 288 because there's only 71 spaces. As a 71 space machine at the top. Yeah. So we'll have two cables on each end. One to 18 will get connected. And I'll pass this around so you can see it, but it has a keyway on it. That's the keyway there. A big <laughs> and it fits into the big one on here very carefully twist and let's see if we can hear it. everybody be quiet and then down we are low up at me listen you hear it click that means it's connected take take one okay we have uh five of these boxes so three backups three the, backups yeah three extras and we have one extra cable also. We have been operating one of these systems in Canada for 10 years. With, with no problems. So if you are kind and treating it like a baby, it will last. And I, I will show you later uh, how to coil this cable. It is, you have to be very careful with it. And the way we cave the coil it is to hang this here and over the neck like that. I'll but show you tomorrow. And that's all that. So, electrical resistivity field surveys. How to design them and how to collect the data. Electrical resistivity is around. So, we got a little bit of design. We got a little bit of design. So the same as we were doing yesterday, we're measuring the potential difference, the MN, with an AB current injected. 
if we current go chase that bit of potential M and go shout out to party. See what happens. Well, everybody has one of these forms. Oop. If you have one of these forms, oh, yeah. you can follow along right yeah. there. So you see the equipment then? Syscal R1 Plus. That's important because some of the software requires you to select Syscal R1 Plus. And I've gone over everything else, but um, I, you know what? One thing that we don't know is what are the conditions where we're collecting the data. Are, are we going through the forest? Are we all in open fields? So you can see on that third picture, <coughs> this is a shot from Indonesia. Indonesia I think it's from Borneo. I'm going, going across probably a rice field or something like that. So when you're designing the survey, we will go out tomorrow into the park and do a very simple winter array for one. That will take about two hours of, for the data to be collected. So I don't know how to do it. We go in the field to do surveys with between two and five people. And de depending on what the terrain is like, it will take us up to two hours to connect everything up. And with everybody here, we will take one hour. So if we start at eight, we should have everything collected by or connected by nine o'clock. So nine thirty. And then we'll give people a chance to see how we start the data collection. And then we can come back here so we don't have to stay in the sun. And Arger has volunteered to stay out in the sun and watch the equipment. <laughs> Somebody will say. And I understand that you also, uh, because of the heat, we may have a truck out there with this unit in it. So that it, so that it doesn't overheat. When it's running, it's continuously running, injecting current, and it gets hotter and hotter. So the way it injects is it injects a positive voltage then it reverses and injects a negative voltage and you choose the time. It could be 500 milliseconds, one second, 250. So I'm taking it, you hear my shit, right? 
but, but we get to choose that. So you can see on the list here, first of all, you have to decide, are you doing a 1D survey like we did yesterday, a vertical electrical sounding? And you would choose to do that if you just wanted to know something about what the conditions were at one point. But what we're going to do, and we'll be able to compare the 2D survey that we do in the park tomorrow to the 1D survey that we did yesterday. And the equipment also can be used in boreholes as well. So we've done borehole surveys as well. Borehole? Borehole. So this is the ground surface. So the depth that we're going to see depends upon what's listed here. The length of the line, the total length of our 2D line, the type of array we're using, Brenner, dipole, dipole, but as you know now, particularly the resistivity of the ground. If this is 100 ohm meters, maybe most of the current goes here and doesn't get into the lower layer very much. So I love diamonds in Bali. The four hundred one in me. I will take me up. If this is 500 ohm meters, <coughs> then more current makes it deeper into the ground. And we see deeper. <coughs> and so, is there a Myanmar term for rule of thumb? Do you know rule of thumb? Rule of thumb. Just it's a, uh, <coughs> a way of estimating something. That's just a standard way of estimating. Rule of thumb is a big English term. Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Okay, so you can estimate how deep it will see. Estimate so come on, Estimate look man. Because in resistive conditions, the resistivity mean it change in your It will see from one quarter of the length to one ten of the length, the total length of the line. So if we had a 100 meter line, We will see somewhere between 10 meters, one tenth, and 25 meters, one quarter of the line length. So this So this would be in resistive conditions. And, and, this would, and this would be in conductive conditions. But in average conditions, it's one six to one seven. So if you say that one six to one seven is approximately sixteen meters for one six, then approximately fourteen meters for one seven. And how well we see, how resolution, what's the term for resolution? Camera resolution, diameter resolution, So we, depending on the spacing of our electrodes, from a space, electrodes, 
<clears throat> with this system, we would vary it from one to 10 meters. <clears throat> one meter would give us very good resolution. But we wouldn't see as deeply. And 10 meters would give us poorer resolution. But we'll see deeply. So when you're designing the work you're going to do, it's called a trade off. High resolution, shallow. Lower resolution, see deeper. So, um, and sometimes you're restricted by the space that you have too. So in the park, we may only be able to stretch out 220 meters or 240 meters, not the full length. And, and as I said yesterday, with 72 electrodes at the 10 meter spacing, we can stretch it out 710 meters. 10 meter spacing, so 710? 10. And a few other things that I include in that survey design is how many people do you have? How much time do you have? And then health and safety issues that we talked about. Other people around or you're in a remote area. <coughs> and this system has an internal battery that's fine for 1D. One one and, for, and for short 2D surveys. So you might be able to run one survey. Short, I don't mean this way, I mean over time. So maybe for three or four hours it will come up. But we'll use an external battery uh, for the surveys that we're doing, an external 12-volt car battery. And it's important that you insulate that car battery and this system from the ground. So we'll put this on plastic or wood. And the battery also. And you you get to be creative because if your battery runs out, you can use your vehicle battery. You could leave your car running uh, or the truck. The truck is on rubber tires, so yeah. it's insulated. Yeah, so if you're near the road, you can, you can have the car as your extra battery. <laughs> So on the next slide, Which slide is the survey layout. So we're just on page two now, just the second page. The, the, the big picture one. Yeah, no, the lower picture one. So this, the background picture here is a picture from Canada where we had very dense trees. So I can look at it, you have the matter of young, what's been there, or just think you have and in this case, we hire line cutters to cut the trees to make about a one meter line through the trees. So you have to take into consideration what the conditions are like for where your line's going to be. 
So in the park, nice and clean, quick, we can do it. But the park does have some problems because there's concrete, some places where we may want to put stakes, electrodes. So we'll do some things to adjust for that. It's best if the lines are pretty straight, very straight. So line But if my computer was working, I could show you that sometimes we snake the lines a little bit. And you just have to remember that when you're doing your interpretation. Some software packages can allow you to have an X and Y. Remember how we were setting Y to zero all the time? Some software allows you to have X and Y vary. Now here we're maybe trying to see aquifers as deep as 70, 60 or 70 meters in Myanmar. So when we design our survey, we want to try to see about 20% deeper to make sure that we see the 60 meter feature that we're looking for. So a target, if our target is 60 meters, I would design to try to see 80 meters deep by uh, using the spacing. So you can adjust the spacing of your electrodes to make sure that you have a long enough line to be able to see 80 meters. There are two pieces of software that come with this unit. Two pieces of software? software two software packages. We have loaded some of them on the computers, I know, um, and I will go through those later, but they're on these sticks. And so you can load them on your computers and we will, we will practice with them later. And the one package helps you design a survey sequence. <coughs> and so a sequence is a set of quadruples, four electrodes. So if we're doing a winter array, we would have four electrodes, and we would tell this system to turn on 35 and 38 and inject a current, 
And we would measure the potential at 36 and 37. And the the so the sequence that we repair, prepare will be A, M, N, B, lists of four electrodes that we're turning on for current electrodes and measuring potential electrodes. <laughs> so that would be a winner array. For a dipole, dipole would be A, B, M, N. Dipole, dipole, just not A, B, M, N, T, M, N. So further on the survey layout, um, try to minimize elevation changes. Elevation changes. <laughs> so if this is the ground surface, okay, you explain. we could have it flat. We could have it gently rolling like this. You could even handle, you could even allow to, you know, coming down a cliff like that. But don't put anything here. Put an electrode here, an electrode right here. Because the software would has is very difficult to interpret that sort of change. So minimize these abrupt variations when you decide where to lay your line. I we have a, a page that is a daily field report page that we will distribute. The power's back on, so maybe Is it? Yeah. Okay. Is that a training manual that? What's that? Is it in the Iris manual? Oh, I do, yeah, I'm not sure. No, I just meant you have your field book around. Oh, uh, I have one in the... One of the most important things for geophysicists to do is take very good field notes. And like every good scientist and engineer, you don't erase anything. You don't wipe out anything. So, so you should use a pen but a field book is easiest rather than just sheets of paper. And I don't know whether you have field books here or not. Because these ones are right in the rain, so you can write in the rain on them. Not that we ever work in the rain. <laughs> but one thing absolutely you do is draw a picture of your line on your paper or in your field book. So the people map paper in my balloon is right. Line is good to say what I have it or go say it how I don't know. And estimate the elevation variation between every single electrode. So come I am at the uh and then yeah that's actually the how they and they do you have a day electrode down yet electrode down yet was our ball and then you knew it's in the army.
if I tape so they can tape them up too? Yeah, if you want to, it, it is uh, coming off all the time anyway, so. I, mean, I can do that easily. Here. If, if you don't do a good job and there's little wires sticking out, then you are the one that is going to suffer. <laughs> so that's this topography needs to be estimated, measured, and recorded. Yeah, and we sometimes use GPS. GPS If it's an actual <coughs> GPS for elevation. But, but the ele the elevation for GPS is not very good. It's better horizontally than it is vertically. GPS is better. Global positioning system. Global positioning system. Yeah, no GPS. Uh, GPS. So GPS is more accurate horizontally than vertically. Yeah. So. So you're better to estimate the elevation difference, unless you have huge changes. If you want to extend the line further than, let's say, the 710 meters, or if you decide to run it at five meter spacing and it's only 350 meters, or whatever, 355, so if you want to extend the line, you just get the line of over change in SOE. There is a procedure that's called a roll along. A roll along, so that procedure to push it. Where you move one cable and extend the line. Okay, but could don't be not the line of swim. And you can keep on doing that. I got over set the cell bomb. To make a longer line. Over a shade line out. And I'll show you how to do that with the software. A little later on. So, how do you make sure you get good survey data collection? Remember our RS check, pour water, bang the stake in further. RS check, check them. So you want your electro or your RS check to be within two orders ideally. So that is so two orders is ten squared to ten cubed. One hundred to one thousand. Ten squared and ten cubed. Or ten, one order to ten thousand, pardon me. Ten to the fourth. Or that's yeah, ten to the fourth. Thank you. <laughs> or you can see I've got ten to the first, ten to the one to ten to the third, or even ten to the third to ten to the fifth. Ten to the. Th so this is the fifth bar. Maybe draw it. Hours. Yeah. Do you know what power? Does everybody know what an order is, right? Power is bigger than that. 10 to the power of 0, then we go 1. We got 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, the 10. So you want them to be within two orders? There is order, none of the town is above me. If you do a survey and Let's say all of your RS checks are in this range, and one of them is 30,000, you're going to have some trouble with your interpretation and your injections or your measurements. The interpretation of the, the injection checks are not the same. So to say, I so 
if that one's showing 30,000, you have to try to do everything you can to reduce it into that range. So, generally, I don't have a lot to say. I need to tell you, the Kuga value is so not in there. So, you can check the one, a little you, the a full jarret, and we are going to let the man up the near the GM. So, I have done surveys in dry salt underground. So, I have to look at whatever I'm chaining, I'm Yama. So, I where the RS has been very high. RS But because they are all in the same order, it works. Get up, go on. Range never seen me this not simply level. It's, it's harder to get current in for the system. It's difficult. It's difficult to inject high currents. Am I got a current immune table and neck kick it? Yes, he's not. But this this is a very resistive environment, so we see further. I mean, well, I do know about what resistance I'm in now. But you shouldn't run into that here in Myanmar. <laughs> in Myanmar, you should be in this range. Or that range. I forgot the sand is the town he ja. The more in the town is the town he ja. I love ja, my baby mama so in. The look them are in it. Maybe occasionally you'll go a little bit higher than that. I think that the bounce in Myanmar have you seen. Oh, you don't get to look at the picture of the baby diaper in big picture. <laughs> so we talked about making sure the electrodes are in hard. We can check the wire connector. Wire connector, you let check lower me. Bang the hammer in more. Nepo Or bang the electrode in further. Electrode the barrel, then the pepper yite arrow, then a kind of lower me. But in very difficult conditions on surface, you can just put a piece of metal <coughs> into something that is saturated. So I'm a few in a net, and it has to go metal to go. Tell I jam, she did a little bit of the Yanko cooked it in a big use on it. You could use salt. You can use drilling mud. Or you can use baby diapers. Baby diaper. Take the plastic off. Plastic off. And we have used all of those in surveys that we've done. So then the next slide is keys to good survey data collection. Bottom picture there. So take care of your equipment so you know it's working. And check it before you go out to the field. There are ways to test to test your switches and your connections with this unit internal to the unit. And who's ever helping you teach them very carefully about the fact that they have to pay you for a beer or a beer for every time they step on the cable. Because this cable has 36 very small wires inside. So, uh, for instance, <coughs> if you have a road somewhere that you're working on and you have to cross that road, um, you should use a pickaxe to make, if it's a dirt road, to cut across just a very small channel. 
We've we've put them through culverts under the road. Uh, uh, you know, culverts. Yeah, because if a vehicle rolls over it, it's not going to break the first time, but it may break the tenth time. And we never drag these cables. We always lay it down. You can stretch it out a little bit. It has a Kevlar thread that goes from this end to the other end. Do you know Kevlar? Kev Kevlar. Kevlar. So it's very strong, like fiberglass. There's a very strong thread that goes from this end to the other end. So it does have some strength this way. Okay. And as I said earlier, um, you are better to do the coiling of these cables once you've learned how to do them. And you want to have good assistance if you're going to teach them to do it because it's very easy for this cable to get twisted up inside if you don't coil it properly. Yeah, and you'll see that as they age, they start getting twists in them, so they get figure of eights instead of, you have to try to roll those out. And then finally, protect the equipment when it's raining. Often what we will do uh, if it's raining out, we'll get a plastic bag like this. We'll tear out the bottom corner. Then we'll stick this through like that inside. And then the box goes on and we have a plastic bag on the other end. So everything will be inside the plastic bag. Yeah. And make sure no water is running into it. If it, we, We've brought 10 rolls of electrical tape that we'll leave, that stay here. And that's what, so when we coil this, we use electrical tape or rope. Probably better rope here because it will last a long time. <laughs> so now we're on this page here. Steps when you're going to do your survey. You decide what your spacing is going to be and you lay out. So if you were doing a 10 meter spaced layout, you could just lay out the cable because it's 10 meters. And then bang in your electrodes and everything. And connect it up. But if you're doing a different length, 
or separation spacing, you're going to have to have a tape measure, uh, a long tape, um, and like we did yesterday, lay it out by measuring. So in that case, you'll bang the stakes in first, and then you'll lay out the cable. And you'll see tomorrow we'll take the extra coils and just leave them to the side, one side or the other, to have the takeouts connected to the electrodes. So now you have everything hooked up. It's all hooked up to the unit here. And maybe before you went in the field, you loaded the sequence of that uh, sequence of electrodes that you were going to. The uh, MS thing is the electrode sequence chart, sequence layer table. So you'll have your file and you'll have it loaded. We'll look at these files shortly. The file goes now. Can I get the antiba? This unit will store thirteen different sequence files. I don't know how the manufacturer decided 13, but they did. So you select the sequence that you want to put in. And then you do the RS check like we did. RS check team A, and they are looked at the new. And there's actually an RS check button right there. RS check button. Now, unfortunately, the manufacturer doesn't allow you to stop <coughs> the RS check. So it starts at electrode 1 and it goes through to 72. So RS check of the camera. The way it does it is it checks, is, checks the resistance from 1 to 2, takes about 2 seconds, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and if they're under uh, infinity, it just gives you a number. And if it's uh, if it's over infinity, it stops. It goes click, 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 click. It keeps on trying. Over infinity, so, so the number got nine infinity. Here, so I mean, so I'm a click, 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 click. Let's say this was infinity here. I think we jump infinity to this. So you go there. It wouldn't go past that. It would I have a door. Oh, yeah, name. So you have to push a button to make it go past that. And this in your the field book, you're going to mark these down. And I hope you know, no, good, no, good, good, not good. Not good. Not good. What I do sometimes yeah. is I actually take pictures of the screen. There's actually a picture. This is a 10 channel system that we own. There's how it appears. I'm, that's essentially how it will appear on this one, too. But you'll only have one or two lines. The line I love is my mom. Resistivity will check. So as you see, these are all good. They're between 3 and 20. Just before I go any further, if something happens and you're not able to load your sequence onto the system, Okay, the sequence could load in load me up, so yeah. Maybe your cable has broken or your computer's not working. <coughs> There's an internal software that allows you to make a sequence file. 
sequence file of the Tema in the next software file. So that's when you improvise and you collect the data set that's close to what you want. Using the internal system here. So you've checked your contact resistances. If they're not good, you've gone, you've poured water over the electrodes, you've changed the connectors, um, you've hammered it into a different spot. You might have to pull an electrode out, move it over, that sort of thing, to try to improve. And make sure you record any bad electrodes, ones you can't fix. Uh, most times, you can start your survey and it will keep on going past bad electrodes. And then you can remove those ones in the software after. And occasionally it will stop and you need to have somebody there to restart it. So now finally, the other steps that are on here, you connect your external battery if you're going to use it. And that's the little switch here that goes between the internal battery to the external battery. Right there. Int, int, internal, <coughs> ext, external. You have a set of banana plugs to uh, a big alligator clip that goes on to the battery. So then you start your survey with start. Watch it for five minutes. You can see the data passing by very quickly. And you want to see that your voltage, your VP, is in the millivolt range, that it's not zero, and that your current, there's current going in, it's not zero. The current when it's zero of a table, the voltage will be in the middle of and we can look at some of those numbers later as well. <coughs> the next one is a pretty... We'll go for another five minutes now and then take a break. Since I'm seeing some blinking eyes. <laughs> This is that example that I was talking to you about where you can see that there, I don't know if you can read that, you can see Hello, it here. Hello, 555 kilo ohms, 353 kilo ohms, but we got very good data at this site. So the array types. The advantage that we found to the winner array is that it works in most situations. It, it puts in a big current and it makes a potential voltage difference happen in between the electrodes. So, voltage The Wenner Schlumberger array, as Doug was telling you, I should have marked these. So you have your A, B, and you change the spacing 
of the AB, and I didn't draw this one properly. So you keep on expanding the electrical current, and you can leave the electrode MN at the same separation. Oh. Okay. Now, when are numbers are rated? Oh, I did. Okay. Sorry, I forgot this was a. Yeah. So there's a separate AB. So the blue AB would plot deeper. And this is just an estimate. I forget, is it D over 2? I don't know what uh, people are using. Yeah. So they just estimate, and you plot up a, a plot. You know that the farther apart the AB <coughs> was, the deeper it will be. And the, when the AB are closer, then it's a little bit shallower, that data point. So this one that you saw from your modeling is looking deeper. There is also one called the reciprocal Schlumberger. Reciprocal Schlumberger. And I will tell you that in English we have just as much trouble as Arger did there saying Schlumberger. It's a very difficult word to say. Schlumberger. Reciprocal Schlumberger. Reciprocal. Yes. Yeah. Difficult for English people to say too. <laughs> So now you're putting the current inside. There's a current And then you're measuring MN outside. And we use that a lot because we have a multi channel system, 10 channels. So a typical winter Schlumberger with 72 electrodes might take an hour and a half to collect. A reciprocal Schlumberger can use the 10 channel system and do multiple measurements each time it injects a current. So it can measure these ones and these ones at the same time. <coughs> and you can collect it in a third to a half the time. So it would take you 30 minutes to 40 minutes to collect instead of an hour and a half. <coughs> I'm just letting you know that unfortunately the two-channel system doesn't make the reciprocal Schlumberger happen any faster. This is two-channel? Two-channel. Two-channel, that are the new, the reciprocal Schlumberger ring, yeah, uh, the ten-channel Miami, it's able to set the Miami. And the results from this and the winter Schlumberger are generally about the same. Is that the same time? No, they're about the same results. The results are the two-lap again, that one has Schlumberger, who could not the cool. The two channel does allow the dipole dipole to collect data faster. So you inject AB and you can measure again two channels at the same time, MN. The MN And, and this system does do that. So the only <coughs> Disadvantage to the dipole dipole is that when the MN gets too far away from the AB, the current is much weaker out there. So the potential voltage is much smaller. So potential, yeah, voltage So it would probably not give you as good data if you're doing 710 meters. But if you're doing half of that or less, the dipole dipole can give you good results.
And I was talking with my colleagues earlier about the different offices of the company that I work for, Golder. So to make a comparison to uh, Myanmar, my colleague in Mandalay likes to collect Wenner. My colleague in Yangon likes to collect reciprocal Schlumberger. Me, I like to collect Wenner Schlumberger. So, if I'm just doing one. So actually, Mandalay is like Toronto in Canada. And, uh, yeah, and Daipo Daipo, or the reciprocal Schlumberger is our Calgary office, and then I'm from the Vancouver office. The Vancouver office, So, uh, my advice to you is if you only collect one data set, it will be Winner Schlumberger. The one data set, you mentioned, not Winner And the software that I'll show you after the break allows you to make up a winner Schlumberger sequence. So so let's take a break for 10 minutes and uh, drink or whatever, make, make short wires. <coughs> It's going all right? No, mostly I just go. I've got my tea bag there. Actually, is there a clipper production unit? No, it's not easy. Okay, this is just power. We are the HR department. HR. Oh, hello. Or, or you can also just. My piece. Oh, don't. Do not. Do not. Do not. And get one that will take. Yeah, yeah, please. I was just debating whether to show this one or not show this one. I think it would just be too confusing for me. I've made my advice they should run an under Shumbay. And I'll say dipole, dipole, if you have time. Maybe you have to know. I'm trying to have a winner from there. Dipole, dipole, dipole. Okay. 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 The winner focuses more on the expander. This is uh, uh, beta and gamma uh, winner. Basically. Oh, well, you know what? These are the things that we can uh, experiment with as far as yep. just doing, you know, 
in conversion. Okay, so I'm just going to move over this one and say here's no. the sensitivity. You see that it close to the electrodes, it's significant. And some it looks at layers better, and we'll talk about this when we do the model. Sure. That was funny. It's a fabric going on at all. <laughs> it, it, it was Ren that, or Kenny that said that. Oh, I was expecting that might happen. Oh, yeah. Well, this is good. But yeah, it's good. Well, and once again, in the field, they start. And the thing is, once they start playing with the software, oh, no, I was going to pass those out. You want to just tell them to off those sticks to load ElectroPro process, and they can transfer this file here. Yeah, copy, copy ElectroPro, copy process, and copy that file across to the computer. Yeah. Okay. 
So do the same thing. Pin the pass for all of them. And that is a bulldog. Is that where these data were taken? He did that. He did go to the machine. He did that. 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 Process will just move. You don't need any extra. Okay. Ask, can you ask if everybody has uh, loaded the uh, software onto their machine? 
Okay, we can press on. Yeah. <laughs> 
You don't have to end any, any of that. You can just go past it. Kevin? Oh, was that right? People? <laughs> or you got to this oh, yeah. hydrologist. Uh -huh. Trying to figure out where we're going. No, well, I'm trying to figure out if he's connected with any of the best sounds that we have. But he's not connected <laughs> all with all the PBSC. He says that's outside of his area. But uh, there definitely are. You know, we just get the right people and the right data sets to get, yeah. get, get the level of detail better. Uh, yep, with the dashes. It's up here too. Yeah. Does anybody not have it loaded yet? Yeah, Need help? Oh, there, at the at the back. Do you need help? Do you need help? So, excuse me, um, one more thing. So, we were handing these papers out for getting your models. I have one. Now I have two. There should be three. No, so what I do is... So, I'm missing one of the papers. Parker, can, can you explain uh, that to get a, an icon on the taskbar, they can type in Electro and when it comes up on the left hand side of the screen, you know what? I'll do it here. We'll do it here. Okay, you do, you show, you show. Everybody, listen up, so that you can get an icon, icon go, in your taskbar at the bottom. Text bar, yeah, made it. Which is text bar? Type Electra. And my, uh, you can made it. Right click. Click, click, right, right click. Right click, right click. And then choose. Well, I've already got it. You will have the option of pin to taskbar. I've already got it. So. Well, yeah, well, so pin to taskbar. Pin to taskbar. Am I right? Let me know. Pin to taskbar. Oh, give me a, give me a. So because I've already done it, it doesn't show up. Well, look, I've done the two more of a bone. We've got a more of a bone, you know. You can see if you, if you do that, that will give you this. That's it right there. 
Okay, so that's the icon of Electro on the taskbar. Icon bar, let's show it. Icon bar. Six, seven, one on the second row. Six, seven, two, three, seven, two, six, three. Okay, I thought it was a nine. No, it's a two. Seven, two, seven, six, seven. And don't forget the dashes. Dash, my main. Does everybody understand how to get an icon under taskbar? Next, Bama, I go Yabu to the Lara. Nale Lara. And they can do the same for process. Argue they can do the same for process also. Process is the other software right here. Process. Yeah. Start from where you are. Sorry. What is start from where you are? F five starts you from the beginning. Just just go there. And just press. <coughs> Okay, everyone, let's go. Yes, I do. Okay, let's press on. Yes, I don't know. Hey, just stand up. With no, keep that on there. Get, put it back over. This is how I collect the short wires. I collect the short wires and I put them over my head just like that. <laughs> He's a natural. <laughs> With this, with the software, with the interpretation software, you will be able to produce what are called sensitivity plots. Sensitivity. Sensitivity. So, what areas of the half space are sensitive to the survey that you're doing? Okay. So, with the dipole, dipole. This area here beneath the electrodes <laughs> is the red is the area that it most looks at so when you inject the current. And it doesn't see the blue areas as well. So this is the winter array, some different types of winter array. The winter array is very good at looking at horizontal layers. And what we find is the winter schlumberger is a little bit better at looking near surface for horizontal variation. Horizontal variation, my dad, what? Dig out, 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 dig
sensitive DVD, IO pen like this one book. So when we're looking, uh, when Doug is uh, looking at some of the software later, he will discuss this further. And if he's not nodding his head, well, then. No, I mean nodding your head saying, yes, I will. So everybody has done this, hopefully, and if not. So um, the license belongs to this system, to this software. That was what, what has been given. And it can be used on as many computers as you want to use it on. So the other license bar, what you say, license to do, license to do, be So now, what you say, you don't have to do it. And there's two field computers, one as a backup that go with the system that have all of this software loaded on it also. So who's ever collecting data can use your own computer or you can use one of the field computers. The field computers are both a uh, little bit tougher than the average computer. They're called Panasonic Toughbooks. So they'll take a little more kicking around. Taking more kicking around. But still take care of them and their batteries are not brand new so they only have about one or two hours of charge. So but you, you can use them to download sequences and upload data. And the download pins on here, I'll show you tomorrow as well. This is one USB, USB and that's the second backup USB. Not USB, not Fushi Babi, eh? And there's two cables, just in case. Okay, but next to Tara Bay, eh? The Luma Mabel. And this software, if you lose it off your computer, can be loaded from the Iris website. The software will come up, yeah, Bobby, so, eh? Iris website, I need to download the Luma so you can put it on any time, you just have to Google search Iris and the site will come up. Google search Mashabiroli, Tanoloyara. So creating the sequence, here's the sequence design. You have ElectroPro on your computer. You can follow along. Uh, so there's four main screens on ElectroPro. There's the creation, creation shimet or label bana, creation shimet. The configuration, configuration. Viewing your sequence, viewing the tiga bana. As a graph and graph looking at the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet in the tiga bana. So I'll just cycle through those. That's the configuration the screen. Configuration screen look over it. That's the viewing graph. A viewing graph, yeah. And that gives you the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet. So let, let's uh, escape from there. So this is how you create your grid. Tomorrow we're probably going to do four meter spacing. So right now you're not showing very much on your screen. Do you, everybody have ElectroPro running? So choose line. Line will you have? And then hit next. Next go take like bar. Line will you do it next go take bar. Line will you be next to Negba? Yeah, you might have to read it off your computer because that's pretty hard. Yeah. So in your X grid spacing, we're going to use four meters. Spacing of four meters or limit at the moment, spacing of four meters. 
So enter four here. We're not offsetting. So that's zero. zero, pare, ma, zero and we've got 72 electrodes. You can electrodes type that in, net. or you can just hit the arrow. You're so probably showing 48. Pare. Just click the arrow, and it'll go to 72. 72. Is everybody good with that? Yeah, la, la. No, yeah. Now, choose automatic grid. Automatic grid, will you be And then, Create grid. Create grid deck. And now you should see. Well, I've got the wrong one there, but just a second. So now you should see zero, four, eight, uh, etc. And you can space. You can go along and see that it goes up to. 284 meters for the 70 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Has everybody got that? Yeah. It's all good? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to the configuration screen. Configuration screen. So, you can choose a name that you want to. We're going to do a winter schlumberger. So I've entered winter schlumberger WS 72, 4 meters. WS 72, 4 meters. And actually, the one I have right now here is uh, the vertical electric still sounding. So I'll just show them. WS 72. I have to I have to reload the uh, vertical electrical sound. <laughs> That's all right. Axel, what happens if they, they press create and then they didn't get the create? Well, take a look and see what uh, what they had. Who, who didn't get it? Yes. So choose one of Schlumberger. You'll see you have all kinds of choices there. See, there's dipole, dipole, all kinds of poles, winter schlumberger. Uh, ignore the VES. That's the vertical electrical sounding. We're going to do it. VES, VES, yeah, we're, I'm, I am, we're going to do a vertical electro sounding with it tomorrow for comparison to yesterday's I've got it as a WS72-OM. We're going to do just apparent resistivity, not IP, so we just choose row. Row bed on my man, don't know IP material, okay? And the other IP material. It's always a good question what to do for the time. So that's saying that, but that we don't, I mean, maybe that may go down really she got it. If you have time, then I recommend you use 500 milliseconds, which is a half a second. Say she may say no, now yeah, milliseconds don't matter. So that's a half second for each injection period. That gives you the best data. You can go as low as 250 milliseconds. If you were just trying to do a quick survey and you're willing to sacrifice maybe a little on quality, quality, you know, in that time I will not change short high end body. 
Or if you're late in the day and you're supposed to be home for supper, and it's time to get out of the field, then you might choose 250. Mm -hmm. And the longer ones are more for IP. One second, two second, four second, eight second. One second, two, four second, eight second, zero, IP, two bar. I get some food and I put it. Now, different practitioners have different ideas about what quality of data you want to collect and what your stacks are. Does everybody understand what a stack is? Stacks are about the data. ST is the case stack. Do you understand this? what a stack is? The last stack. How many times you collect the data and average it? So if you're in a very noisy environment uh, where there is a powerhouse nearby or um, it could be railroad tracks, electrical railroad tracks. So get a go noise and yam 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 and the ground currents are varying very quickly. Then you, you might choose more stacks. And so th this automatically goes to three and six on your computer. We typically change it to two and four. And I'll explain that in a set in a minute. This is the Q, this is a quality measure. For well, quality measure. How much difference is there in the readings it's taking? So this is a standard deviation. standard deviation of Yamawara. And we do a lot of work in, in noisier environments, so we sacrifice some quality to be able to collect a, a piece of data, a data so, point. So quality, So we tend to use this number as 5%. <coughs> you could set it at 3% or 1%. So or if you're in a very noisy situation, then you might choose a little bit higher. So the way this works is it injects a current both directions and it's always measuring, always measuring, it averages. Then it does another cycle. Same thing again. And then it looks at the standard deviation of the average data that it's been collecting. And if the variation is under the Q value you've chosen, so this was a stack of one. The one stack. Today. This was the second stack. Uh, yeah, stack bar. In this case, if those numbers are within 5% of each other, it moves to the next quadruple. So I demand 5% And if it's not, then it does two more, just four stacks. So if it's not under 5%, it goes three, four. And after four, it stops. Five percent of the three to four of Yamaha is stack up. So each data point, if it's doing a stack of two, takes about six seconds. So stack two, you know, you have to do a half second of Yamaha. Using that half second. And that's what the Naya second or the millisecond of Tokyo Naya can do. If it goes to four stacks, it would be more like ten seconds. So four stacks are not say second of Java, man. 
So if this number was six, it would take 13 or 14 seconds. And we're doing several thousand measurements. So you can see that you have to decide a balance between quality and time. Does everybody understand that? So the numbers that we use most, some of our practitioners, the ones that are in Mandalay, use three and six. Some of us use two and four. So you have several ways that you can control the data collection. Data collection, you know, control of If you have a low battery or you're collecting for a long time, you can use this save energy. <coughs> so the machine will automatically control how much voltage it puts in and it will keep it small so that it's measuring what it thinks is a good value. So the two safe energy group, you like this on your below energy time less or three tablet look it up, no? I think both are you. But we find sometimes that saves the battery, but we find sometimes that it sacrifices the quality. So general safe energy look you like this on your battery grow uh show tablet don't be made the quality marathon I'm a kind of so we use this 50 millivolt setting. 50 millivolt setting, don't I mean, Emma? And that's also recommended by Iris. Iris got the Iris company have got the road. Because what the system does automatically is it measures your MN and it injects a voltage that will give you at least 50 millivolts. So MN and it time will drag. It, it injects a current. It injects a current that will give you at least 50 millivolts for your VP. So, And you can choose your maximum AB voltage based on the system that you have. This one will put 600 volts in. So, so typically, I would suggest that you set this at 600. So what that means is if you have uh, a very difficult current injection and you're trying to get that 50 millivolts of potential voltage difference, it will go up as high as 600 volts for the injection. And that could drain the battery faster, but hopefully you have enough batteries to keep the system running for the day. But, you know, maybe if you're on a really hot day where it's 45 degrees there, you might choose to make that less, 100 volts or 200 volts. And especially if you're running a shorter line, if you're not 700 meters, but you're 300 meters. Yeah. Okay. So for now, set that at 600. Because that's what this system is capable of, of uh, doing. Now with the dipole dipole, you can actually choose, uh, this can actually go to two. That's the number of channels it's going to use. There's, the, uh, there's a dipole dipole, see that's a DD. And so it's going to use two channels. 
to do the data collection. But I'll show you more about that later. So when you choose Wenner Schlumberger, Wenner Schlumberger no, you may, so this you automatically becomes one. You can try to change it now if you want to, but you won't be able to. And this one says use gap filler quadrupoles. Gap filler quadrupoles. Quadrupoles. So for the dipole dipole, you can infill extra quadrupoles because you don't have to stick to the standard dipole dipole layout. Dipole dipole ma so you know dipole layout ko ni na. Here, I'll just, I will show you what I mean by that. So, here's the graph of a 72 channel, 5 meter spaced dipole dipole survey. You, you can see down here, it tells you what it's collecting, so this one is collecting 2,380 quadrupoles, but it's only having to inject 1,500 times because we're using two channels. So it's doing multiple measurements of VP for some of the injections. And so if I choose not to allow gap filler quadrupoles, not allows or could you that one gap like that out. It's only going to collect, actually it's collecting the same amount, it would just inject 2120 times and it wouldn't get as many data points. So do I inject, see when you want to talk to you, data losing the lot of me, I don't want to. Yeah, so I'm going to go to So I'll show you more about dipole, dipole later. Dipole, dipole, now I'm going to talk to you later. Now we're going to do a winner schlumberger. Do you have a question? Any questions? So typically what we do is we try to inject at A6 to 8 of these. And let's show how it builds up. So you just have to either just try double clicking on number 1. So this is an A spacing of 1. We know that that's four meters. Eight so out of one. It's making a uh, all of our electrodes are just four meters apart. A B M N. This so is like the, the, one the one first one. measurement we did yesterday. So if you double click there, and you can double click on the next one. Not Or you can go like this. Highlight. Okay. If I want to erase, if I want to erase those ones, I can highlight them and hit delete. Delete Okay. And then if I just hit delete, it will go back. And then if I just hit, if I highlight them again, they will go. I'll turn off that number nine. So let's see. We're going to build up our quadrupoles. Come down here. And this is standard compute. That's the one you'll use mostly. Left click on that. And it's telling you it's going to collect 496 quadrupoles. It's going to do 496 injections. There are a couple of uh, um, problems with this French constructed software. Okay, so one of them is how they represent time. 
So does everybody have the same screen sitting, the same thing on your computer? Do you see the time says 12.27.56? So that's telling you how long it's going to take to collect the data. How many of you work with Excel? Does everybody work with Excel? Excel spreadsheets. Excel look at look at that Excel. Spreadsheets on your computer? Yes, they, they work with Excel. When you try to format time <coughs> in a cell, thing will format time as well, isn't it? So in this computer software, you saw what it up. So although this is noon hour, it's equal to zero. So this survey, and it's only an estimate of time because it depends on how much stacking you do. It's only, it's only going to take 27 minutes. So so ignore the 12. So this one's going to take about 28 minutes to collect. Click on OK. And let's go look at the graph. Graph with you. So this is the upper layer, the, uh, the shallow layers. These are the quadrupoles. There are only one spacing of A. Say, they asked to say, say. No, no, we're good. No, nope. we'll get there. It's, it's actually this system automatically saves. Oh, are they asking to save? Yeah. Okay. Say yes save. and call it. Yes. Call it the same thing as you did. You grab. You grab the I usually call. Oh, what do, do they? What do they need to say? Save as. They ask. Save as. Which file? Which place? Where, where should they Location. Uh, you choose. Uh, if you have a new program or a new uh, project you're doing, you can save it under the project, and then you just change directories when you open it later. Yeah, it's a little safe file. Maybe it's on the desktop. That's not much safe now. Well, that's. I never save in the desktop, but they can do what they want in that one. I always save in a folder. That makes sense to me. Okay. Save it in a folder that you like. <laughs> you can save it in a folder called Max in honor of me. Oh, you're not translating that? I said you can save it in a folder called Max in honor of me. I usually call the file the same thing as I name up here. But if I have a project that was maybe, uh, I would call it uh, Ma Yamin, I might call it Ma WS72. M A W. Because if you just save it like this, when you go to different sites, you may forget what you had done with that one. So you can see that it's estimating it's going to see down about 15 or seven and a half meters. Then we've got a four meter spacing. Maybe the space sheet A. So then click on the view sheet. View sheet go ahead to like back. So this is the data that's the sequence file that's going to go into there. The first the data collection is going to be current between one and four electrode and it's measuring two to three. Current one to four, two to three, current. 
Then it's going to inject in one and six, so it's starting to spread the current electrodes out. And it's remember this is a winter schlumberger, so it's keeping the measurement electrodes the same width, the potential measurements the same width apart. So and it's expanding the current electrodes. Okay, and it gives you your depth levels and the K factor. You, you didn't cover K factor. No. Okay. That'll come later. So let's go back to the configuration one. What I like to do, and what they recommend doing, is overlapping layers. Yep, let's go another eight. So for this one, I've chosen to do eight. We, we did eight, and now we're going to overlap the layer. Overlaps are kind of like that one, huh? So. This data collection is going to look the same as the ones that are down here. Just hover over, let's see, we got this. Okay, so that's telling you approximately what depth it's looking at when you, when you go over top of it. 24 and a half meters, if you just put your uh, mouse, your cursor over top, you'll see what it says. So let's view that or go down here and do the standard compute. Standard compute name, man. And okay, that's going to take 52 minutes of approximately. It's usually a little longer than it says. And then let's view the graph now. So remember how I said it's overlapping? So the greens are the data from the next layer. Or from uh, from having A spacing of 2A now. So it's A spacing at 2, 2. So now it's 8 meters. Right? And that just gives you a better data set. It gives you better quality because you have more data in the same place. But now you've expanded your uh, voltage or your current injection electrodes which should give you a better potential voltage difference so back to configuration and you can do this just do it in eights so each one we go down is just a wider spacing between the current electrodes. Oh, pardon me. And the potential voltage electrodes, I should say. So A and B or M and N go over J and A. Okay, so see what happens when you get to here? Is everybody up with me or should I wait? So do you see what it says? Good. Maximum investigation depth is not available. So that's that's the maximum spread we can get because we only have 72 electrodes. So number 72 electrodes by sheet is set more low. The T by R, the type of it alone yah. So that's as an example for you of how we build up. And now, if you choose standard compute, standard compute can pay like me. Okay. And then you go and view the graph, and there you go. So this may look down as far as 50 meters, but it's usually not very good down at the bottom. 
and it's going to take about an hour and 20 minutes to collect the data. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Okay. So often, and it's going to collect 1,431 quadruples, but it can only do it one at a time. And so, Do it with six now. Do the overlap. Doug, it's a good spot to stop uh, because the next step is to actually look at data and we'll have the data tomorrow to look at it so we can go on looking at the data tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And it's after four now. So. Yeah, so we've got... Okay, just, just, so I'll just yeah. finish this up. So do your standard compute, yeah. but because we're, we're, because we hit a, oh. <laughs> because we hit a dead end, and we only have four in the bottom layer. I often will just include all four. That's what you saw there. So if you go to your view graph, that's probably what we're going to do tomorrow. There's 1,530 quadrupoles. 1,500 and? And 30 quadrupoles. And it's going to take about an hour and a half. 1,530. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so that's the one that we just did is the one that we will collect tomorrow over the same line as we did our vertical electrical sounding. And then tomorrow we'll go through how to get that data off the machine. Sorry. And how to process it. Okay, and compare it to the single, uh, to the vertical electrical sound. Thanks very much for listening to me. So you guys must be very excited. Why, why are you excited? Be because we went out to the park. You, it took, what did we spend? Three hours. We collected 10 data points. They were noisy. You came back and you inverted those with the app. And people got very different results. So that means that maybe that's not good enough quality data. Maybe you need more data to get a good interpretation. So interpret the quality So in the same time that it took you uh, three hours to collect the sounding data, Max is going to collect 1,500 data in less time than that. So you saw today how to try to invert the field data using just three uh, three layers, uh, row one, row two, row three, and two layer thicknesses. So can you imagine what it's like to adjust multiple layers where you've got maybe 
10 layers that each have its own thickness and uh, resistivity. So, did you have a say layer? There were a mess of blue bones and chill on the channel. I was saying, I thought we ever see the other one. So that actually might be pretty complicated. And that's the reason that we want to have a way of inverting the data. <coughs> so how many people here want to learn how to invert the data? Data inversion, Raise your hand. Okay, good. That's good. Yes, yes. Okay, now, before I tell you how to do this, I need to know from you what you know. So I'm going to give you a test. This is a very simple test, but it's going to tell me a lot about what your capabilities are. So, you know, by observing the machine, you are buying your joints in the laser, a thin and good to a big one, and a big one, and a two or bar of your information. You are a big one for the end of the test. So, this is very important to me because I need to make sure that I'm providing information to you that you can understand. So I'm going to give you this simple test. If you understand what a matrix is and a vector, it's only going to take you one minute to do. Uh, can, can I interject one thing? Remember, Doug is the one that's saying it's a simple test. Yeah. You may not agree. No, it is. It's very simple. <laughs> what a simple test for you, So, here it is. Everybody gets to do this. <coughs> no exception. <laughs> Just for your interest, I was going to show you this. I've also programmed up a vertical electrical sounding to use the cables and the system. It will give us 24 points of data, and it will collect in about two minutes. So a little bit shorter than yesterday. Try to, try to tell me, you know. They might not understand. Oh, well, some people know. Oh, do you want to do that right now? Yeah, to do that right now. Can you ask if anyone has USBs or tools? If anyone has USBs or tools, can they please return? You ask me if you see it. Okay. So we just have to figure out how many we're going to make up tonight. What's Sit this? around watching television. What was this? Okay, we're just going to figure out how many we have to make tonight. Oh, I see. I don't think it's, I think it's almost there, but. Oh, yeah. No, I won't take it. Anyway. But everyone, everyone completed one. Good. At least one.